successful as a religious spiritual man, and he was successful and very, very influential as a secular man. He was leader. He was a good example of everything. Yeah. What was the main method? What was the main method? What was the main reason him to be so successful? Is is that he was a good example? He was a good example of simplicity. He was just a man. It's maybe too hard to understand. He was just a model of simplicity. If you will learn his life, he was so simple, but he conquered so many hearts. So, yeah, he used to do all the things. Uh, used to milk his God and mend his clothes, repair his shoes, help with uh, houseworks and help his companions, etc. Community. And he, his life was an amazing model of simplicity and humbleness. And another author uh, of different historical books mentioned about him as a person who has broke all the superstitions in the, in the society. Actually, you know, what are the, how can we de define the level of prophets? Yeah, they are all prophets, but some of them are more, like how to say, explain it in the Quran and different books why some of them are more popular, more influential because they were sent to the most challenging nations and our prophet was sent to the most challenging nation in the world to Arabs but to Arabs to the entire world so he broke stereotypes he broke superstitions in the society he disfigured God's uh, idolatry, idolatry so it's the idols you know, different. They had some idols for nature, for water, etc., etc. And uh, never has a man in the history undertaken so many power beyond the human power. So never has a man accomplished such a huge and lasting revolution in the history. He has changed the history of mankind. It's not easy, right? Yeah, and. Remember, I said his way was his very simple. Actually, he was orphan, but the orphan who adopted the world. Remember, we talk about the revolution that he made. Before he came, Arabs used to kill their daughters because they are not male. He was a person through Islam. He could change it, and it shows how he was successful how he was influential in his society. Yeah, and, and this, this, all the words that I explained before, it was uh, Alphonse de Martin, the uh, French writer and historian man. He wrote in his book all the things that uh, he moved in not only armies, legislations, empires, people, and dynasties, but millions of men in the one third of the invaded world. And more than that, he moved the altars, the gods, uh, the religions, the ideas, the beliefs, and the souls. His main idea was the unity of God, that there is only one God. It was hard to explain at that time. Arabs, before that, you know, they worshipped some idols. It was really challenging to change the minds of people at that time, but he was successful. And equality of people. In his last speech, he said, non Arabs is beyond the other nations, non other nations or represents other ethics beyond the Arabs. All people and ethnics and people in around the world they are equal. So and he explained that he was very good orator, good speaker, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, restoration, dogmas, etc. But we already know all those things. We don't have to you know so uh, we need some explanation for that. Yeah. Uh, 
his way of being successful prophet starts before that he knew that he is prophet. I will tell you a story about one Roman Empire's king. He was in Damascus, Sham city in Syria. Unfortunately, they have war today. <coughs> in Damascus, he was the strongest man. Uh, he was the president for Roman Empire. And he heard that there is one prophet and he's, he's spreading some religion. And he said to his slaves, found someone in this city, Damascus, someone who is Arab, to ask this Arab about the prophet. And in this time, in Damascus was only one Arab, and he was not, I mean, he was enemy of the prophet, Abu Sufyan. Can you imagine? He would ask about our prophet from the enemy of the prophet. Abu Sufyan, yeah, he was very happy to introduce the prophet actually. He tried to he tried to do something that this king would hate him. But the story was very different. When he came to the king, he asked not made him to, to speak. He just asked one question. What do his community think about him? And he had to explain that all Arabs, business people, normal citizens of this city, country, even if they are not believers, non-believers, non-Muslims, they love him, he respect him. You know, his intention was to say something not good about him, but the question was very clear. What other people in society around him thinks of, think about him? So he had to explain what other sur uh, surrounders of him think about him. So he was really fascinated. <coughs> He, he is influential not only uh, among believers, but also among believers. Really loved him and respected him. Even if before he knew that he is prophet, they really loved him. He was a man, he was a true man. You can is able to rely and give even all the keys of their some, you know, gold uh, stores, etc. Because he was really reliable. And yeah, do we really follow him? I mean, the Muslim people always say that yeah, I follow the Sunnah of Prophet for sure. Yeah, they would, we would like to be like our Prophet, but <coughs> sometimes we fail with following him. Actually, he was he used to go to Hira, cave of Hira, to have some thoughts about his life. What is his goals in life? Is what's his mission? But nowadays, Muslim even don't spend even one hour to think what's our goal in our life, what's our mission. It's like imagine the driver he uses a car without knowing where he's going to, just driving around the Hong Kong day and night. You will say that he is crazy, right? Just, you know, just driving without knowing where he's going, you know, without knowing destination. But sometimes we all we also do the same. We don't know where are we are going to. So we should think: what's the purpose? What's the purpose of life? Who was created? Who has created us? We are living for what we are living. That's it. There's a question that we rarely ask ourselves, even Muslims. We just do something because our fathers used to do that, our grandfather used to do that, but never ask ourselves, what is my purpose? What the... the little things, the reason, please. What is my purpose? What is my goal in my life? If we will think about it, we will gain more, we will contribute more benefit to ourselves, to ourselves at least. And another time, another very good suggestion to success from our prophet, he never used to say, I can't. He always say, I can do, inshallah. There are certain negative type of minds in society. When you, just, you say something, brother, can you help me with that? No, I can't, it's too hard. Can you rather do that? No, I can't, I have no time, or, or, or it's too, too heavy, 
it's too expensive and I can't do it. But if the person relies on God, he should say, I can do with the support of God. We eat in that. We should be able to say that. When you say that you can't, you can't. No, not because you can't, because you think that you can't. It creates a big, huge wall and you can't overcome it. Because you are in your mind created the great wall and you can't overcome it. Because you think so. Actually, we have more opportunities, more power to do something if we will believe that we can do that. So our Prophet Muhammad he was a great example to be positive. I can't do that. Once he was in the mountain, he, they were escaping from the non-believers, they tried to kill him, and he was with his friend, al Bakr They were together, and he was very nervous. He was nervous. Oh, they are coming. The non-believers coming to kill, kill us. You remember, uh, do you know what our Prophet said? Don't worry, Allah with us. Don't worry. So, these kind of beliefs we should have. Don't worry. I can't do it because the God who won will help me. I'm not alone. So, when you think that you can do something, this spiritual power and this inner strength will make you to be successful in this work or in other things that we want to do. So, there are so many messages, I think you are getting it. Yeah. Once his uh, uncle said to him, you know, uh, some of our relatives and community members, they are not happy that you are spreading Islam. Maybe you will give up it. Maybe it's, it's easier for you to just give up it. It will be easier. But he never took Choose the chose the way of to be just easy to have just easy life. He said, even if they will put the sun on my right hand and the moon on my right left hand, I will never give up spreading Islam. I believe that Allah will help me to spread it. I have this strength inside, and he never gave up. But you can't imagine how it was hard that time. So that's one of the examples how to be successful, never give up, to have inner strength. So who are the successful people? <laughs> so we say so many methods to be successful. We should say that you should uh, have spiritual strength. We should have up to should uh, properly allocate our time. We said that. We should believe that Allah can help you, we should be very positive, we should hard work, and etc. etc. So many things. But what who are they? Successful people. In Quran, in one of the ayats, one of the glorious ayats of Quran, he said the prophets are successful. So the being those who sincere lovers of the truth, they are also successful. The Shahada or those who witnesses of truth, uh, they are also very successful. The Sanyahin, those who do uh, good deeds and they try to uh, practice Islam and religion the most right way, they are also successful. And true believers, they are successful. If, if you will ask me, are you successful? I will say yes, because Ayat of Quran say, those who believe, they are successful. If I believe, I should be successful. I have to work hard. I should have inner strength, spiritual strength. I should be very positive. And I should really take about, care about time. Actually, there's one uh, anecdote about the time. One Turkish man came and I had some conversation with German. You know, German people, they are very punctual. They even, even take, care, take care about minutes, you know? At 2.31 we will have meeting, uh, 3.43 we have uh, class, they even count these minutes and seconds. And the Turkish man said, 
why you do so? Just say half hour, you know, one hour, and two hours, and etc. Why you count those minutes? And this German said a very good sentence. I learned it from your religion. Oh. Uh. He said, how is it possible? He said, look at your time schedule of your namas, of your prayers. Your, your prayer time, they don't just say half hour, one hour. They said 25 minutes after that hour you can, you should pray this prayer. Morning prayer, you should do, you should pray till 5.33, for example. Your religion has so, uh, so say take care about the time. And I learned, we learned German people from your religion to count even minutes. And this Muslim was fascinated. Oh my god, I, I don't know my religion. So uh, don't don't have stereotypes. If you have if you have seen some Muslims who is not so well practicing his religion, it doesn't mean that it's fault of the religion. Try to learn Islam as it was spread by our Prophet his characteristics, his relation to his family, society, how he was very successful, how our religion and our uh, uh, ayahs and senses from Quran teach us to be successful. You know, I mean, in the beginning we said about Yusuf Islam. He was cast in a very popular uh, star and became, became Muslim. He said, if I saw Muslims before I accepted Islam, maybe I will not be, become Muslim. He learned, he learned Islam from the books, so he learned it the proper way. And he went to, when he went to different Muslim clubs, he was saying, "Oh, what are they doing? It's not the way how we should do." You know, so don't have these stereotypes. When you see someone who's lazy, don't say that. Yeah, he's lazy because he's that and that. Actual our religion teach us teach us to be hardworking, to be on time, to be more positive, to be more successful. Yeah. This is one, one, another story from our prophet's life. He makes, he smiled, and companions and friends around him asked, Why do you smile? Because there was no conversation, just he was sitting and st uh, uh, started to smile. And he said, I wonder how uh, believers are, they, if they have something bad, they just keep passion and think that it's good. It's examination. But if they have something good, so they are thankful to God, and still they gain. Right? So, the prophets, according to this word of prophets, believers always gain. If something bad happens to him, or her, or bad or good, it doesn't matter. They always gain. If something really terrible happen in life, they say, it's examination, I should be passionate, and they gain inside of Allah, inside of God, they always gain. If something good happens, they say, thanks to Allah, thanks to God, I have something good in my life, etc. They always value something that they have it on hand. So, there is a way to be successful. Even, even if, if some troubles, bad things would happen to you, be relaxed. It's just examination. If something good, be thankful. Alhamdulillah, thanks to God, I have this one. I have this opportunity. So, that is the main picture that Islam wants us to have about our life. So, when we will just not read all the things we we'll try to apply in our life, we'll be very happy. We'll be very, very successful. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, I hasn't I haven't expected to be so silent. You know, you are the most uh, good audience I have ever experienced. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, maybe you have some questions you can ask me personally. Uh, thank you very much. I think you already have this handouts, but it's not complete one. I have the complete one completed, and maybe later we can send to the emails. I have changed some information, add some more stories. So, uh, thank you very much for coming, and it was a great joy to make a lecture here.
listening you with very interested, you know, with, with interest. Oh, that you. is why you are so quiet now. <laughs> I thought this maybe oxygen is so not so good, so you are going to sleep. No, no, you no, know? No, no, no. <laughs> And now we are open for question and answer and uh, on the topic or any other question in relation to Islam. The brother will be here and we will try to <coughs> push doctor. You know what is a push doctor? What they do? They take care of the wound temporarily until you see the specialist doctor. Then the specialist will handle it. So if you have questions that we cannot handle, we we'll record them and forward them to people who are qualified and we will get back to you. Okay, any questions on the topic? It's not important our nationality. The most important that we are Islamic culture center. What we are doing, we have some lectures separate for ladies and separate for males. Uh, we have also classes for youngsters. We have also classes for adults. And we really want to be suitable for this for their time schedule. For example, business people they are more available during the evening time. So we have evening courses for business people, older people. We have ladies session every Saturday. Every Saturday, so today they are having from <coughs> until the evening they have a class of program, they um, read. Mainly, uh, we are open for all nationalities. And even some non-believers can come. We don't <coughs> limit we are open for everyone. If someone wants to learn Islam, we are open. If someone wants to send up, they have some questions, we should be open. If uh, our doors will be closed, so how can uh, other non-Muslims learn Islam? So we are open for all nationalities. We have teacher who can speak English. We have teacher who can speak Arabic and Turkish. And uh, some other uh, sisters uh, from Philippines community, uh, Indian Pakistani community, so they support those teachers to translate if they other sister has some questions. Also, we have many converters, local Hong Kongers, so they uh, also uh, very jointly uh, join our courses. The main goal is to serve to Islam, as all other organizations in Hong Kong. We want to bring these values of Islam to the society to be useful for all the communities of Hong Kong. And we, we are really close to the mosque. Yeah. High form mosque, right? Yeah. Uh, Paul, yeah, I could explain. Yeah. 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 So, um, for example, in some relation to Islam and non Muslim, some happiness, maybe. <laughs> Um, traveling the maybe Hindu and Muslim Christian get up in the traveling in the train. Because some time happens accident, then some die. So how can how can you find that this Muslim and this Christian and this Hindu? How do you find that body? Actually so because during the moment when the Hindu woman very different culture, in many, in many culture also wearing the shari, Hindu, uh, Muslim, Christian also. Uh, Men is easy to find, but women, how, how do you find the, 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 this Muslim and this non-Muslim? No, no, what we have nowadays, that they announce that there was some accident, and there were some people died, so, and, so, and, yeah. and so, they are waiting for their relatives and friends to come. No, it's, it's, it's in Hong Kong the same. They want someone to come and say that he's my relative, he's 
he's for example from oh. India. Or maybe from maybe not uh, settling. Maybe I'm traveling to Germany. Yeah. So, so I no have any fixes on the card, anything maybe, and, and my pocket empty. So how to find this? Is the religion is the this guy the Muslim and this Christian? Yeah. And the, the, the only way is yeah. from those people who know this person. Yeah. But actually, religion is something in your heart, so you can't uh, have identification uh, looking at his some uh, yeah. documents. This, this, um, the main is it can easy to find. Main is the suppose yeah. then easy. This is Muslim. Yeah. And. 100% Muslim, not I'm 100, but my father and mother is a Muslim. Yeah. But maybe other women also have accident. So how come find the, this Muslim, suppose that this wearing the Muslim dress, yeah. is this accident, if you don't mind, is this certainly some accident in the wearing the yeah. Muslim dress. The easy to find this is Muslim. And the non is wearing some, for example, yeah, this uh, lady, uh, this is accident something. Now how to find this woman, the Muslim? Right. What will be the purpose of identifying the dead body? Yeah. Is to treat them according to their religious belief no, or the burial, if, right? If you don't understand my meaning, how do in the Muslim, woman is the Muslim. Yeah. Man is the Hindu, I'm Hindu, right. so Muslim. Then easy find the, is the, this we understand your and point. Yeah, we understand Christian, your yeah. point. But what yeah, would be you. the ultimate goal of identifying this person, whether he's a Hindu, a Muslim, or what other religion, like a Christian? The purpose will be to say this person is a Muslim. The dead body should be treated as the Muslim tradition. That will be the goal, right? Why would you want to identify the dead body? For what purpose? Because it's a handover to the family. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The so, handover to the family. What the family will do afterward? They have to bury the person, right? They have to bury the person. If he's Hindu or whatever, Buddhist, they have to burn the body or something. What is very important is the, the way you use your time in life. It's not the way you end. The end is not so important. What is very, very important is it doesn't matter whether I die in a plane crash. I can die, you can't find any part of my body. I'm not talking about the any. <coughs> no, just, uh, just let me come to the point. The whole point will be to identify the body and treat that dead body as the Islamic belief or Hindu belief or Buddhism, something like that. But as I said, the ultimate goal will be. This person does no matter how you die, you will still go back to your Lord. You remember the story of Prophet Ibrahim mentioned in Surah Maryam. He came and asked Allah, Oh Allah, show me how you bring back the dead people to life. Allah instructed him, he said, Go and catch three birds. <coughs> yeah, kill them and put them in a what is called Put them in a, uh, no, how to say, cook them, make them like a, uh, how is it called, a kind of a beef when you you mix it up. I, I, I don't understand. Just make it mince. <laughs> mince the beef and put them all together and cook it. Yeah, I know. If no, you wait, wait, mind. wait. Just wait. If you don't mind. Because I'm also a rush and I don't waste your time, everybody. But just make example for. I'm open talking about, and uh, if you uh, father, mother, you are Muslim, in the bone you are in Muslim family, the, of course you are Khatna, you know Khatna? Yes. You say if you are Khatna. It's not Arabic term. Khatna. Okay. Yeah. But if you woman, Hindu and Muslim woman, how come you prove, how do you prove that this uh, woman is the Muslim and this is Christian Hindu. No way. How? There, no is, way. there is no there way. Is no way. No, no way. such a symbol. No, no you way. will not find anything on the face, on the dress yeah. that is Muslim or is There is Christian no way you find that. out. Yeah. And only by one next <coughs> or friends that we say that he is you don't there find no, no there no other way. For men I understand what you mean, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not necessary that all have this thing. All men also don't have. Thank <laughs> you.
very important question. Thank you for your question. Any other question? Any comments? I'm sorry about no, no, it's okay. Thank you. Just Thank you. Thank you very much. By, by the way, by the way, your question is very interesting. Yeah, we are listening, so and then we got some. I think okay. uh, fully everybody understands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what they, no, I really appreciate this uh, answer. And really, it's true because if you, uh, I can talk to maybe some uh, Olua. Yeah, maybe the imam. Uh, imam, but very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah, very difficult. I'm not satisfied, really. No, that's what I said in the beginning. I said we are not here to answer to all your questions. There are a lot of but questions we ourselves we don't know. No, I'm I'm angry with you, but because uh, I'm not satisfied this answer, this my question is not properly answered. I think uh, okay. everybody understand okay. and you are satisfied. Inshallah, they can yeah. give you to, to answer, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. uh, but so uh, you give me. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. But then we are going to uh, religious schools. Uh, so. uh, imams are teachers, advice, yeah. similar things. Yeah. Uh, because you, uh, you, mean, the, you know, men uh, have said easy to find the Muslim better, but women cannot find how to find it. Our imams, our teachers uh, suggest us you should carry the sign of Muslims. Okay, anybody, I'm going to the time. We should carry the Muslim signs, like uh, a door or paper, paper or scarf uh, or, or, or some eye and smalls in your carry in your pockets <coughs> or in your bags. Maybe this is somebody find your personal belonging in between. Brother, uh, I won't go to that extent. <laughs> Carry the ayahs in your pocket, does not justify you are a Muslim. Anyone can carry any copy of this Quran in, uh, and can carry that, the Buddhists, they do that. What is, uh, what is important, brother? I'm not able to answer your question in a very satisfactory manner. That's one. Number two, as far as I know, it's not very important for oh, identifying the body when an accident happened like that. Not important, but that's, that's what I'm saying on my yeah. own side. I advise you to go to the office of the Imam. He's qualified. Maybe he will give you a better understanding of the question. I'm not qualified to answer that question. I'm not just I'm discussing your answer to any question. Actually, that's why I'm Actually, uh, we, only, we only can tell you that there is no such any mark on the woman's body. I understand. We, can, we can guarantee that she was Muslim or Hindu. You will also learn this. <laughs> Any other question, please? Any question? Comments? We will ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> what is your understanding of the world? Okay, for example, that in this lesson that we understand that when you trust it, then you can define it as a successful, right? Can we say that? Okay.